Now I have to say that I wasn't very keen on the regular size smartphones folding into half. As I felt that it made more sense to fold from a tablet form to a smaller form factor, but with smartphone designs getting really boring in general, this phone might change my mind and here's why. Hey what's up guys, Adam Lobo here and you're watching Adam Lobo TV. If you guys are new, hello and welcome. Do consider subscribing to my channel as I release videos at least twice a week, sometimes it's three times a week. And if you're returning as a subscriber, welcome back my friends. Now this particular review unit did not come with a box but just so you guys know that other than the user guides and the paperwork that typically comes inside of the box, the phone also comes with a clear view cover which matches the phone's color and then it also comes with a SIM ejector pin, the USB-A to USB-C dongle, the AKG USB-C earphones, the USB-A to USB-C cable and the 15 watt charger. Now as for the phone specs, the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip comes with a Snapdragon 855 Plus chipset with the Adreno 640 GPU. It comes with 8 gigs of RAM with 256 gigs of storage which is a UFS 3.0 storage and it comes shipped with Android 10 with One UI version 2. Now going into the color finishes, it comes in three colors for you guys to choose from. The one which I have is called the Mirror Black and then it comes with Mirror Purple and Mirror Gold. Now starting from the phone's design and build, now here's where I'm going to talk more about using this phone as my daily driver. Having used the Samsung Galaxy Fold, the hinges has surely improved like the Galaxy Fold. The new T-shaped caps place does help to plug the air gaps existed before you fold the phone screen. Now the hinge at the back is also fully covered right now to ensure that dirt does not come between it. So now the folding process was really sturdy and versatile to arrange to any angles that you want. So overall, I have to say that this flip does feel good in my hands where I did not have the feeling of anxiety of dropping the phone due to its small form factor when I first held the phone. Oh, here's where again about 90% of the tech reviewers said that it was really hard to open and close the phone with one hand. Well, look at this. One hand, open, close. One more time, one hand. Open, close. Then the two cameras are placed towards the top left of the phone in a horizontal position and then there's a tiny little screen which acts as a notification screen where by default it shows the time, the day, the date and the battery percentage or any other notifications. Now I have to say that I love the cover screen which the Samsung Galaxy Fold had compared to a smaller little screen over here which also can act as a viewfinder for your camera but of course I wouldn't rely on that. Then the camera bump is really tiny so yes you can type the phone on a surface. Now looking at the phone spots and buttons, looking down below there is the USB-C port and also the mono firing speaker. Then looking on the right there is the volume rocker and also the side key which doubles up as your lock screen and a fingerprint sensor which hands down is the fastest method of unlocking any smartphone right now. And then on the left there's a single SIM card slot. Now as for the phone screen unfolded, it has a total of 6.7 inches where it uses the Infinity Flex display which is a really thin micro level thin glass sheet so it does feel like the display is been painted on the phone and it has a total of 1080 by 2636 pixels. And like any other Samsung devices, watching videos on the phone was really amazing with no visible looking crease which seems to be one of the biggest questions asked for this phone. Then watching Netflix was also great where the video stretches out just before the Infinity O cut out. Alright, let's look at the phone's camera specs. The phone has a 12 megapixel f1.8 27mm wide lens and a 12 megapixel f2.2 12mm ultra wide angle lens. Now the overall pictures for the main lens and the wide angle lens did look very similar to the Note 10 series since the image processing played a huge part when taking photos on the phone. So if you like the photos on the Note 10 Plus, which I felt was really great, you will surely love the pictures on this phone. Now even though there's no depth sensor but the image processing again played a huge role to ensure there is a proper shallow depth of field in the live focus mode. 
and the dedicated night mode was also great as you guys can see with the option of switching between both of the main lens and also the ultra wide angle lens. Then the additional features also includes a single take mode which was first introduced in the recent Samsung Galaxy S20 series where you just have to point to a particular scene where you take random filter shots or even video footage with this AI processing which I find it kind of handy and eliminates the typical need to edit photos from scratch where I did find some options over there to be quite nice indeed. Now since the phone can be adjusted in different angles, it also means that you can adjust the phone to be a tripod-like mode where Samsung calls it the free stock folding technology to do some Instagram stories, live streaming or my recent video chats with my friends and family members. And yes, this is also applicable for those of you who love taking selfies without having a tripod on your phone. Then as for the front camera, it comes with a 10 megapixel f2.4 aperture and when it comes to the selfie shots, both the regular selfie photos and the live focus mode did not disappoint. And there are two modes for the front camera with a slightly wider shot option and also a tighter shot, although it comes with a single lens just like the current flagships. Now looking at the phone's video taking capabilities, the rear camera records up to UHD 4K 2160 up to 60 frames per second where the videos look nice and sharp and the image stabilization was really good at 4K 30 frames per second. Then as for the front video recording, it also records up to UHD 2160 up to 60 frames per second with also great image stabilization at 30 frames per second. Now as for the phone speakers, yeah, I did find that the volume to be quite decently loud and clear and here's a quick sound test. Now as for the phone software, it is shipped with the latest Android 10 with the One UI version 2. Now since the introduction of the free stop folding technology, now not only gives you the split screen when taking photos while the phone is half folded, but the multi-active window is also great at this angle to watch videos on top while scrolling on your browser below hands-free. And then the regular multitasking is also great and the One UI skin still remains one of my favourite Android skins. Now looking at the phone's battery, it comes with 3300mAh of battery which is divided into two stacks of battery cells, one on top and also one down below. Where based on my test using the phone as my daily driver, I got a total of 5 hours and 80 minutes of screen on time with automatic brightness turned on and without dark mode on at 10% battery. Well I kind of predicted as this phone will give me a good battery life since the battery optimization for Snapdragon processors is really good although that the phone comes with a smaller size battery since it was the same great battery life when I tested the Samsung Galaxy S10 Lite which also had the Snapdragon processor. Now as for gaming, I believe that this phone is not a phone where people would buy for gaming but I did do some casual gaming of Gear Club and I had no issues during gameplay and no heating problems as well. Now in conclusion, like the Samsung Galaxy Fold, this phone aims to look into the future. Whether or not the phone is perfect, maybe not, but it's going towards a world of boring smartphones where it can be quite boring when it comes to the overall design and form factor. So yes, my answer is yes, I think it's a great phone. Now as for the phone's price here in Malaysia, the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip is going for a price of 5,888 ringgit, which I'll leave a link at Samsung's official site as they're also giving an installment plan if you guys want to get it. Now, if I really had to choose between this phone against the Samsung Galaxy Fold, now not because of the price, but I would totally go for the Samsung Galaxy Fold because I love its larger screen form factor and I like the fact that it folds from a tablet to a smartphone, which is surely a step forward from a typical smartphone. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching and let me know what you guys think of this phone down at the comment section below and do give this video a nice big thumbs up if you found this video helpful and subscribe to Adam Lobo TV if you guys haven't done so. Stay safe, stay at home and for my case, stay in the studio and I'll catch you guys in my next video.